I'm Peter Vaughan and today I'm at the Caravan and Motorhome Club's Clumber Park site in Nottinghamshire with this brand new campervan which was only launched at the NEC a couple of weeks ago. It's the Remor Horace 66, a model that has been developed especially for the UK market and in fact is only available on the UK market. If you're wondering who Remor are, well, they're an Italian brand based in Tuscany, like most of the Italian motorhome industry, and they've been building motorhomes since 1978, so they should know what they're doing by now. They're also part of the massive Trigano group, along with brands like Autosleepers, Auto Trail, Chausson, Roller Team, and others. They, in fact, they became part of the Trigano group in 2015. Now, this new model is the fourth, a fourth model in the Horace range, all based on the Fiat Ducato, all their panel van range are called Horace, named after a Greek god, I believe. So this, of course, is the latest Series 8 Fiat Ducato, as you can tell by the bold new Fiat branding on the front. Engine is 2.2 litres now, rather than the old 2.3, and a standard 140 bhp engine. There are very, very few options on this vehicle, but you can go for an automatic rather than the six-speed manual this one's got. The automatic nine-speed is 2,600 pounds extra. Other options, well, these alloy wheels, 16 inch, are 995 pounds extra and you can swap the standard white paint finish for a metallic grey for another £995. Everything else you see here pretty much is standard, including this nice wide electric step that automatically retracts. But let's talk about the actual base cost of this vehicle because that is perhaps the really interesting thing with the Horus. This vehicle starts no, not with a six, and definitely not with a seven. It starts at 59,995, which in 2023 is pretty impressive. So I can forgive the white paint, and I can forgive the fact that the alloys are extra, because you don't get many camper vans under 60 grand these days, okay? You have got the sort of caravan style windows that sit proud of the bodywork, but then you get those on a lot of much more expensive camper vans too. This of course is the long wheelbase Fiat Ducato, so it's the six metre van or 5.998 metres if you want to be really pedantic. The other thing though that you will notice is unlike most continental or imported camper vans, look where the sliding door is. It's on the UK side, emphasising the fact that this is a special UK model. Not much to see round the back, there aren't any reversing sensors, but you can add a reversing camera for £399. So then let's take a look down the offside. And the first thing is you've got an attachment for an external shower as standard equipment. Just plug in the fitting and you've got hot and cold water, hose off. The dogs maybe, or your muddy boots. Maid's hookup, of course, and your fresh water filler. Now that's 85 litres and the tank is inboard, which is important as an underslung tank can freeze, even when fitted with tank heaters. And then you can't flush the loo or even make a brew. So very pleased to see an inboard tank because then you've got your shower, you've got your water at your kitchen sink, and you don't have to worry too much. Waste tank, however, is underslung, so you'll have to be cautious, more cautious about that. But no fiddly little tap to, un, to, to empty your 90 litre waste tank. Just pull on this T handle and it drains down really, really quickly. So that's another plus. Usual cassette toilet hatch. Although it doesn't quite seem to be the same white, but hey ho. And then your LPG gas tank. So you've got onboard gas tank, 25 kilograms, and that only services the, the cooker, uh, hob, grill and oven, and your 
hot water system. The heating is diesel fired and the fridge is a 12 volt compressor one. So 25 kilos of gas should last you a very, very long time. But this is why you'll choose a Horus 66 over the other existing models in the range, which have traditionally continental type layouts with fixed double bed across the back or fixed single beds. No, here you've got a very British layout. No air travel seats, this is a pure two berth van, but with a super spacious rear lounge. Now the light's going, it's starting to get a bit chilly. I'm gonna put the heating on, put my feet up, and I'll see you in the morning. Ah, good morning. Right. Well, I slept well, I have to say, because the, of course the rear lounge turns into your bedroom. And what a generous bedroom it is. Because you've got those long settees, they turn into a double bed that's 1.97 meters long by 1.85 meters wide. That's six foot five and a half long by six foot one wide you're gonna to need to buy some super king size bedding or as I've done, two separate uh, single duvets to fill the space. When you wake up in the morning, well, you've got these reading lights on either side, so you can quite comfortably prop yourself up against the back doors and um, hope that somebody will bring you breakfast, but sadly I'm on my own here, so that would be a long wait. Other things to notice before I show you how we actually convert lounge to bedroom. Well, you've got these posh pleated blinds, which you can just push down a little to get a view of, well, it's a bit gray out there, so maybe we'll shut them again. So back in lounge mode and our duvets are stored under the offside sofa alongside, well, completely separate, but alongside where the fresh water tank is. You've got hot air being blown out under here. So the bedroom area is kept cozy. And well, if you want to sleep in single beds, all you have to do quite literally is remove the backrests, probably put those into the cab out of the way. And then you've got twin single beds. And these of course are the same 1.97 meters long but 71 centimetres wide, that's two foot four inches wide. So for a lot of people, that will be the ideal solution. Very easy access in and out of the beds if you get up at different times or if one of you needs to get to the loo in the night. Things aren't massively more complicated if you want a double bed, but you do need these two support bars that I've been storing in the over cab shelf. Now these, probably the most fiddly part because you need to slot them in. There's a knack to it, I think, but uh, you soon get that if you actually yep. own the vehicle. So once those are in place, simply pull out the bed bases from both sides and then the backrest cushions, well, this time they are needed, but you need to separate the top part right, and those can very easily just slot underneath the bed. Same on this side. Again, just pull out the slatted supports and then the two backrest cushions just slot into the middle of the bed. A nice tight fit so cushions don't move around in the night. And I found that you really didn't notice the joins at all. And the other thing I should say too, is that plenty of other companies do a similar sort of arrangement with these top sections of cushion separate from the main backrest. But most of those leave that top section fixed to the sidewall, which I always think is a bit of a pain because it, well, they just get in the way. So I much, much prefer this system where 
those rolls along the top of the backrest just come off and store underneath the bed. So the next thing to show you perhaps is the washroom. And Remor are keen to point out that this is what they describe a prototype toilet. So some of the finishes in here may change. The actual layout won't, but and the design won't, but perhaps some of the materials will. And, well, they don't really need to change very much because it works quite well. You've got proven bench cassette toilet from Thetford, which some people prefer because they say it's easier to clean around than the swivel type. You've got an opening window for ventilation and a big mirror ahead. A couple of spotlights in the ceiling and useful little recesses for toilet roll, toothbrush, deodorant, all that sort of thing. Then the key feature perhaps is this nice stainless steel basin with a proper size outlet. That is no doll's house plumbing. And then when you come to shower, the shower head, shower head pulls out from the tap and then the shower curtain just pulls across the door. Well, I've got no issues with the shower. Plenty of room, decent amount of hot water from the whale system and not too much pooling of water in the shower tray, although there is just the one outlet. Before we move on from the washroom, the one thing I should just add is that there's nowhere to hang anything in there, no robe hooks or towel rings or anything. So probably DIY job or get your dealer to add something of that ilk. What I'm going to add now is the table leg. No, it's not some sort of um, missile launcher or support for the fourth road bridge. This is the table leg. And once you've got used to it, it works very well. This cross shape matches up with a similar fitting in the floor. And then you twist the top it's nice and tight and secure. Now there's nowhere specific to actually store the table or leg. I have found that the table itself will slot here behind the driver's seat, um, certainly while you're on site, and the table leg shouldn't be difficult to store. That could go on the over cab shelf, for example. The table is quite heavy, but nice the fact that it's removable in a Continental van because most Continental vans I'm sure you know, dear viewer, most Continental vans have a fixed table. And look at this, it's nice and sturdy. You could tap on the keyboard on here, but I'm gonna have my breakfast. So what else can I tell you about this lounge area? Well, of course, these settees are super long. We've already covered the dimensions when talking about the beds, but settees well over six foot long gives you plenty of room to invite friends in for a drink or put your feet up to relax. You've got windows, opening windows with blinds and fly screens on three sides, but no big roof vent, in fact no roof vent at all in the uh, ceiling above. The only roof light in this vehicle is over the kitchen area and that's quite a small one. There's no over cab sunroof either. But does that make it feel dark inside? No, it doesn't. For a start, there's lots and lots of artificial lighting. You've got these LED strips at ceiling level. You've got more LED strips under the top lockers. And most importantly of all, for my, in my book, are these reading lights, which oh, so often seem to get forgotten. And also, I think this gloss finish for the ceiling, which is quite unusual, sort of reflects light into the vehicle and stops it feeling dark. Also, you've got this very pale upholstery, of course, and nice light finish for the uh, tabletop. So, yep, it does feel nice and spacious in this lounge area. You've got GRP mouldings all around, around the windows, around the back doors. I just wish that these ones on the back doors had fittings that were, fixings rather, that were cream rather than black. It looks like they've got some sort of 
horrible disease and spots breaking out on them. But hey ho, it's a little, little detail. Little detail. Um, you've got a TV point um, on the wall down there. If you wanted to mount a TV, there's aerial sockets and, and uh, three pin socket there as well. More power points up high, three pin sockets on either side and double USBs as well. And then there's also this neat little touch on either side. You've got these Remore branded, I don't know what they are really, like little handbags that zip open, little carrying strap. Could be useful when you're going out for the day maybe. And also very, very useful is the amount of storage under this near side settee. You've got the full length of the, the bunk in terms of storage and access to it from outside, which I'll show you in a second. So that access under the rear settee, well, if you use it for outdoor chairs and so on, it's nice and convenient, but I don't think I should be sitting outside today because I think it's about three degrees or something. It was definitely below zero overnight, but the idea is there. So good storage, but if you want to access it from inside, unfortunately you've got to lift this quite hefty base um, and there's no prop or gas strut or anything to hold it up. So it is a bit of a two-handed or even possibly two-man job. Over on this side, you've got a similar door, but not storage. That's where your leisure battery and your habitation area fuses live. On storage though, the top lockers, all these top cupboards, you push to open, and the ones on the off side are a really, really good size. But on the near side, they may be a bit smaller, but all these top lockers have a really good lip at the front. So when you open them, everything doesn't come tumbling out. That is a lovely bit of detail design. So to the kitchen. And in true Please the Brit style of this Italian motorhome, you've got a Thetford triplex cooker. So three gas rings and then below a combined oven and grill. Below that, you've got a really deep drawer too. Alongside, of course, you've got your sink with decent quality Argo tap. And again, no Dole's House Plumbing, you've got a proper sized outlet on the sink and a nice little sturdy worktop flap. Not big, but yeah, it does give you room for, well, in my case, the Vital coffee machine will sit on there and there's two main sockets down below. On the front of the kitchen here, you've got the control for your Webasto diesel heating. Um, your gauge to show you how much gas you've got in that underslung tank with an off switch to secure the gas tank when you're traveling. And then at the end here, you've got your whale hot water heating. Underneath, again, you've got drawers rather than cupboards, which are always so, so much better in a motorhome. So you're not scrabbling around trying to find things at the back of a cupboard. Good size cutlery drawer. And again, a good size cupboard underneath. All positive locking too. Up top, you've got that sole roof light, as I mentioned earlier. And then over on this side, you've got your 84 litre compressor fridge, which is mounted at nice, convenient height. Everything's easy to see. Up front, of course, you don't get the fashionable full height walk through into the cab that a lot of camper vans based on the Fiat Ducato now have. Instead, you get an over cab shelf, which some might find more useful. Another thing you don't get in this van is any coat hooks anywhere. I'd have liked some on the wall next to the bathroom door here. But again, nice, easy DIY fix. And instead, I've just slung my barber on that over cab shelf. I was quite surprised though to find swivel bases on both cab seats because, well, with this layer, you don't really actually need them but they are nice to have if your partner's still fast asleep at the back, you've got somewhere else to sit. And with the worktop flap here, you've even got somewhere for your breakfast or a cup of coffee or whatever. Both seats have armrests, as I say, both swivel, but they're not upholstered to match 
the uh, upholstery in the back of the van. They don't use the same fabric as the back of the van. They use the original Fiat fabric. But does it really matter when the two areas are so separate? Don't really think so. And the colour scheme does match the, the rest of the feel of the van. So not, not a big issue for me, certainly. There's carpet in the cab, but not in the main living area. And then another, another little detail surprise is underneath the fridge where I expected to find a wardrobe. Well, it's actually a big shelved cupboard. Probably more useful, unless you absolutely have to have hanging space, in which case you could probably just take that shelf out and add a hanging row, but you'll get a lot more stuff probably in there. I've got camera bags in the bottom and folded clothes in the top, so good useful cupboard there underneath the fridge. And I think that means it's now time to swivel these seats back round to face the front and to go for a drive. Now, there are no surprises driving this Fiat Ducato. Yes, it's the latest Series 8 type, but it doesn't have any of the latest bells and whistles that you can get on some of these Ducatos. So it's the standard 140 bhp engine, and it's got one of these things that you move about, and three pedals. I don't see those very often now. Yes, six-speed manual gearbox as standard, and it's very, very slick. It's a lot better than they used to be. Um, really nice gear change, actually. So if you're on a budget, well, why not? Why not just stick with a manual? It's got the modern dials, but not the fully electronic display. It's got start and stop. It's got cab air conditioning, cruise control. It's got these switches on the steering wheel. But the steering wheel itself is plastic, which isn't as nice to hold as a leather one, of course. But then this is an entry level camper van. Um, I should point out that the radio here, just a small screen, there's no sat nav or anything fancy there, but the the radio and the cab blinds are another option. They are bundled together in a pack, um, which they were giving away at the show, but normally is £1,995. Um, no central mirror, um, which seems a shame as you have got a bit of through view, um, but you've got good twin lens side mirrors, and it's a very, very easy vehicle to drive. Handles really crisply, good firm ride as you expect with these Fiats. And now that firm ride does elicit some, elicit some rattles, um, but they mainly seem to come from the blinds as far as I can tell, so shouldn't be too difficult to silence those, I wouldn't have thought. Certainly experienced worse. And the 140 bhp engine, if you're thinking, well, is that going to be enough? Or am I going to cause a tail back wherever I go? Well, no, don't worry. It is quite sprightly, actually. So I um, accelerate away up through the gears. It goes pretty well. You certainly don't need any more. Um, this is on a three and a half ton Fiat Ducato, and it's got over 800 kilos of payload. So. You're well catered for there too. Um, all round, it's a pretty decent package. Just one snag after our test drive. Well, the guy at the Remore factory that buys in the Velcro needs to put in a bigger order because the seat cushions don't stay put. Time now for some lunch. And this is where, if YouTube included a smell and taste function, you'd be getting very jealous. Oh, unless you're a vegetarian, of course. What is my final verdict 
on this Remor Horus 66. Well, it just goes to show, doesn't it? I've really enjoyed my time in this little van and you don't need to spend 80, 90, 100 grand necessarily because this does the job and it does it well. As long as you only need two birds and two travel seats, well, this is a classic layout that has a lot of appeal for a lot of people because of the size of this rear lounge and the ease of sleeping arrangements at night. Downsides, what don't I like? Well, I think this fabric might stain and mark quite easily and I certainly wouldn't want my little dog jumping up on here as he would definitely do and put little poory dog prints all over it. Other than that, yes, I'd like the cushions to stay still when you're traveling and the blinds or whatever, not to rattle as much. I'd like some coat hooks and some towel rings and that sort of thing. But a lot of that is stuff that a competent DIYer could fix in maybe an afternoon. What you've got here is a well-designed little camper that is well-priced at 59,995. Don't forget that undercuts quite a lot of the competition. And well, if this is the sort of layout you're looking for, you need to put this Remor Horror 66 on your shopping list and take a closer look. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this video as much as I'm about to enjoy my bacon sandwich. Plenty more motorhome videos coming along soon. And don't forget all the motorhome content on our website, outandaboutlive.com. .co.uk